Hello everyone and welcome to my channel and we are going to be doing some reviews of tarot decks and oracle decks and other fun witchy things that I have. But today we're going to be doing a review of the Muse deck. I wanted to quickly do this walkthrough of my favorite and most uh, turned to tarot deck. This is actually the third deck I ever owned. I um, got into tarot back in 2003 and I had one deck. I had the Goddess Tarot deck that I bought at a Barnes and Noble and that was the only deck I had for I mean until 2020. So for 17 years I used the one deck and I actually misplaced it when we moved uh, four years ago. So it's been four years since I really kind of worked with tarot and I decided to get back into it. I actually bought another deck that I'll do a review on a little bit later, the White Sage deck, but this deck kept kind of appearing to me and I feel like it kept calling to me. I guess a lot of people say that they get those feelings from the deck and I never did until this deck. In fact, I, um, since I'm getting back into tarot after several years away, I considered not buying this one because they do, or, um, Chris Ann, right here, Chris Ann, who is the creator of this deck. She actually does change some of the names. Uh, the Major Arcana has a couple of name changes. Arcana or Arcana? I've heard it both ways. I'm going to say Arcana. I'm sorry if that drives you nuts. And if it's wrong, um, please correct me in the comments. I'll happily try to train myself to change it so that I'm saying it the right way. But I've always pronounced it Arcana. And that's how it looks to me. That's how it sounds in my head when I read it. So um, that's what I'm going to be calling it. She does change the name of some of the major arcana and all of the minor arcana have some name changes. And I thought maybe this isn't great for getting back into tarot, but the more I thought about it and kind of pondered it and thought, you know, okay, is that really that big of a deal? Is it going to confuse me that much? I decided it wasn't a big deal and I went ahead and bought the Muse Tarot. I actually did buy... Chris Ann's other deck, which is right here, the Light Sears Tarot. At the same time, the reason I went with this one first and really connected to this one is because <laughs> this one took uh, almost a month to get to me, whereas this one got to me in like three or four days. So this one got kind of caught up in the 2020 holiday uh, shipping madness. And this one actually came from a lot closer and it did not... Uh, take a long time to get to me. So I'm going to tell you about this one first because it's the one I've really been using a lot lately and I have really connected with. And this is a mass produced deck. It is from Hay House right there. I, I did kind of swear I wouldn't buy mass produced decks this year. I would stick with indie decks. However, I bought this before I made that decision. Also, this is the mass produced deck, so it usually has no gilded edging. I love this, by the way. If you look inside the box, it has the fish, which is a reoccurring theme in this deck. So you can even see them on the cover, box cover there. And then inside this one, it says, there is magic in truth. There's truth in my veins where my blood speaks and soothe and my mind has no reins. So this deck, part of the reason I was really drawn to it, actually, I'll just kind of keep this, prop it up right there so you can see in the background. Part of the reason I was drawn to this deck was because of the poetry inclusion, and I'll get to that in a moment, but um, this does not, this deck does not have gilded edges. This was me. I like to do this with my decks to personalize them and to kind of connect with them. So if they don't come with a gilded or a colored edge, I will do that myself. I use Crayola markers. They work pretty good, not perfect. You can see I have just a little spot right there. But um, I like it. I think this is a really good way to kind of personalize and customize your deck. Now I'm going to do a quick flip through of this deck while I talk a little bit more about why I really enjoy it. And this has been used heavily, like a lot. I do a card pull every day. I've done several readings with it. So it is not in order, although ironically I flip it over and there is the full, the zero card. That is the first card. However, I don't believe... Wait a second. Okay, <laughs> that's kind of funny because these are two major arcana cards that are, you know, the, the zero and the two. So I thought maybe I'd subconsciously organize them, but I didn't. So 
this is the fool card i love this fool card she is just prancing right off the edge of the cliff there no care in the world this is one of my favorite cards um, the fool in general is one of my favorite cards and so when I look at a deck, I really look at the full card. I'm like, okay, is this a card I can really enjoy and really connect with? And in the case of the Muse Tarot, the answer was yes. I mean, this is a card that I love. I love her. I love her hair blowing in the wind, how she's kind of floating above the ground, coming right off the edge right there, starting her journey. The Priestess is actually one of my favorite cards in this deck. It's not my favorite card in the whole tarot in general. Um, but I love this particular card, and I think the reason, usually I don't, I mean, people talk a lot about having inclusive decks because people like to see themselves in a deck. I've never felt that way, probably because I am a white woman, therefore a lot of the cards just generally remind me of me. I actually tend to like cards that don't remind me of me <laughs> more than cards that do, but this one really reminds me of me. We look, even my husband said like, oh, she looks like you. So we have the same hair color, the same eye color. I have freckles too. So this card reminds me a lot of me. So that's why I like it. So part of the reason, I'm just gonna flip through and kind of talk a little bit more about the deck too. Uh, well, first, really quick, I'm going to put this down and show you the guidebook. So it does have a pretty decent sized guidebook. And of course, this is the Hay House mass produced version. This is not the Indie Deck Kickstarter version, so it's a little bit different. But it does talk about how to use this deck. It is quite a bit different than your regular Rider weight Tarot because I just feel like the meanings that have been given to them and like the feel of the cards in general are very positive and uplifting and even the darker cards tend to be very positive but the thing I love the most is each card is kind of told in a story of that muse and each card is a muse and then there's a poem at the end so this is the poem for nine of emotions and it says a tasted life of wishes brings the ups and downs of joyful strings and after all my learning sings my satisfied reward forth springs and each um, card has a poem at the end of it so you can go even you know, here, that would be the Six of Voices, Knight of Voices, you know, or Page of Voices has. And then also, she does explain how she um, changes some of the names. So the Wands have been transformed into Inspirations, the Cups have transformed into Emotions, and then the Swords are the Voices, and the Pentacles are Materials. So again, wands, inspirations, cups, emotions, swords, voices, and pentacles, materials. So that's how, like, you know, if this is the emotions, it's actually a cups. And you can usually pick that up based on kind of the details given in the uh, cards. But if you're new to tarot, that might be very confusing. And I actually did write down kind of a cheat sheet and kept it close to me as I was learning the deck. The book here is very good and the other thing i really love about this particular deck is the website she has for it is also incredibly helpful h1 has not only oh this is another one of my favorite cards right here so each um there's the moon card has a page on her website so again that's chris ann's website and if you just look up the muse tarot you'll find it and it has a couple of audio tracks within each one. And the first one is Chris Ann herself kind of giving a brief explanation of the card and the feeling of the card and um, what it means. And then, oh, this is another one of my favorite, Strength. So when I look at decks, I definitely look at the Strength card and think, okay, is this a card I connect, can connect with? And this is honestly, I think, my favorite Strength card ever. So anyway, she also gives the audio of the poetry that she writes for it. And the poetry on the website is a bit longer than the poetry on the book. So if you really like poetry and you kind of want to see how poetry can relate to tarot and stuff, you can uh, listen to that audio on her page. Now, not all of them. I'm recording this on, I think it's January 16th. And not, oh, also all of the kings are replaced with muse and they're all sideways. Another thing about this deck, and this is something I like because I don't read the reversals. Um, it doesn't have a reverse meaning. 
So it's just the meaning of the card. And if he comes upside down, you know, you can interpret that however you want. But I just flip the cards right back over and read them the way that the card was meant to be displayed. So anyway, she gives the longer poems that she writes, just kind of the feel and description for each card and, and you know, just giving you a different insight to the card. There's a longer description, some prompts and other things that you can use to help learn this deck really well. So I highly recommend if you are picking up the Muse Tarot that you also go onto that website and you spend some time on that website. If you go there and put in your order information for where you purchased, oh, the page of inspirations, another one. In fact, all of the pages in this deck, I just love so much. Um, but if you put in your information, you will get something called the field notes. And I used those field notes when I was relearning tarot after so many years and to get myself more familiar with this deck since it is so unique and so beautiful. And so uh, I just, I really, really connect with it so well that I wanted to learn it forwards, backwards, every way I could. So I went onto her website, I downloaded those field notes, I printed them out, and I spent probably two weeks. Yeah, if it's the 16th now, I, I spent a week and a half, two weeks, really getting to learn the cards really well and getting familiar with them, listening to their poems, um, reading the descriptions. Oh, I have a child trying to join me. My door is locked though, so we'll see if it's one of the ones that knows the code to get in. <laughs> so yeah, I, I just, I really recommend going to the website. It really makes this deck feel a lot richer and fuller and makes a bigger and better experience. In my opinion, you might not find it as valuable as I did, my favorite, one of my, another one of my favorites right here is the Queen of Materials. She actually looks like somebody I know, which is why I think I love this card so much. And I just feel like this card is so full of, I'm like a very confident and a very um, self-aware card. I love her. You can hear my husband and my kids arguing in the hallway right now. He's not letting them in and she's not happy because usually she comes in here after her bath. So all of the knights are horses, and these are the only ones in the guidebook slash on the website are referred to as males. The rest of the characters in this deck are decidedly female. They're very feminine, including, like I said, the, the kings have all been renamed muses, and they are female. So this is a very feminine deck. It might not be something that you would connect to if you are a male tarot reader, but you also might. I don't know. Like, it, it's... I'm not an overly feminine person. I know I'm saying that as I'm wearing like pink nail polish. My five-year-old did that earlier. Didn't she do a good job? <laughs> um, but it's, it's one of those things that might turn off some people. I didn't think I would like it. Another one of my favorite cards. This is the Queen of Voices. If you follow me on Instagram, she appeared to me like three days in a single week. And I do the sort of, you know, like I spread the cards out like this and I just run my hand over and then pull out a card randomly. So to have her show up three days in a single week using that draw method is kind of crazy. So she she and I have a thing going. I have a thing for ravens and crows as well. So I think that's why I like her so much. But yeah, if you don't like that kind of change in meanings and card names and turning all cards female, that might, you know, this might not be the deck for you. You might enjoy Chris Ann's other deck, the Lightseer's Tarot, a lot better. But again, I'm not an overly feminine person. And for me, this deck just really, really, really spoke to me. And I just love everything about it. This is my number one favorite card in the entire deck, the Page of Voices. Like I said, all the pages are, I really enjoy them. But this one right here is my favorite. I don't know. I just really love, I love her and her big old glasses and her haircut and the dancing girls around her. And everybody just seems to have this beautiful and wonderful energy. And I love this card so much. And the Ace of Voices. The Aces, a lot of them have this rainbow hair that's really fun too. So yeah, if you like kind of more offbeat decks. So the Hanged Man becomes the Hanged Muse. And again, the all the, um, so this is the Nine of Materials is actually the Nine of Pentacles. Beautiful Queens. 
I know I, I love kind of the scrapbook kind of look that this deck has. The Tower is probably another one of my favorite cards overall, like of all the towers of all the decks that I have. Let's see how close I can get in on her. Oh, I just love her. Yeah, you've got the people falling still. You have the feeling of destruction, but she is coming out just like a powerful force. And again, every card in this deck has a bit of a changed meaning and it spins it in a very very positive way look at that look at that devil this is another favorite card of mine right here the seven of materials which would be the seven of pentacles kind of taking that pause along your journey to look down reflect and oh her shoelaces are untied and that could have tripped her up if she hadn't paused at that exact moment at that exact time so i love this i love this deck I can look at the picture and without knowing the meaning of the card, like if I'm just learning and just beginning, or in my case, just getting back into it, I can kind of get the feeling for what it means, a journey, you're going someplace, you're well on your way, you're comfortable, you're, you're not in turmoil, you're being helped by the muses of materials in this case. And it just it just looking at the cards themselves gave me a lot of information as to what they meant. You know, this one is obviously a dark card. She's bound. She is trying to see through, you know, her blindfold, things that are getting in her way and blinding her. But she's got this light coming from within her that she just can't see. So that tells you a lot about what this card means just by looking at it. And I love cards like this. It's definitely not a pip deck. This card has, you know, these cards have every detail given. So you have the, the balancing act. You know, she's standing on a very fine tip there. She's barely holding on here. She's juggling a lot of things. So that tells you a lot about what the Two of Pentacles stands for. So if you like intuitive decks, oh, the lovers. Now, I mentioned before how every card represents a female. This is actually, let's see if I can, that's actually a female. So the, these are two females represented here in, on the lovers card. Uh, if you read the guidebook and again, the corresponding website that I mentioned, that kind of goes into a lot about what is happening in this card. And it's a very beautiful picture of like two people walking towards each other on a trail in the desert and uh, they're both referred to in the she you know pronoun and again all of the knight of voices are horses and some of them are actually described either in the guidebook or on the website and it kind of changes for a couple of them some of them are described as male horses oop got the a couple of these are upside down and what if the rest of them are well we'll find out so the knight of inspirations again he is a horse, a mane on fire, the fireworks above him. That tells you that it's, <laughs> I have a little one knocking on my door. It's the wands, it's the fire sign, it's the, the fiery, passionate cards. The chariot, you know, she, she, the muse is the chariot. It's not, it's not an actual thing. It's the person. The horses are, you know, connecting to her. Her light's coming from within. It's just a beautiful card. The magician, Again, this is a little bit different than other magicians you might see. She doesn't have the wand and the pentacle and, you know, the the sword and I'm missing one, the cup. <laughs> in front of her, she has the colors and the different, you know, things are represented in her. You know, she's creating something. She's sending this creation upward. But it's a little bit different. It doesn't have your typical symbols on it, which is why it may not be the best one for you. Oh, this is Death. Death is actually one of the most recent daily card draws I've had, which is why it was on the bottom there. All right, so that is the Muse Tarot. I do quickly want to, I'm going to open up the website so this is the website, so you can order the deck, it's going to show you a few cards. Another thing I really loved about this website, and I spent a lot of time on it before I even purchased the deck itself, was because it has every card, if you scroll down, can give you a little bit of the preview, but then every card is here. So you can click on it. 
and it's going to open up the page for this card. So I was able to actually look at and explore the cards before I purchased the deck, which I appreciate. Um, it gives you kind of the, the title of the card, the subtitle, and in this case, A New Journey, The Fool, uh, The Fool card meaning, and the, here's where it has the poem. Now this one's a shorter poem. Some of them are longer, some of them are shorter. And you can play... Oh, there it is. Okay. So there's two audio pieces. The first one is going to be the poetry piece. Welcome to the message of the fool. Okay, I'm not going to play too much of it because I think you, if you have this deck, you really should go on here yourself and explore that. There's meditation audio. So what I would do is I would hold the card in my hand, or if you don't have the deck yet, you can just look at it here. But I found holding it in my hand was really powerful. And um, I'd play the poetry. And again, you know, this one's only a minute, and nine seconds. The meditation audio is about three minutes. Yeah, three minutes, 18 seconds. And while I was playing that, I would scroll down. And here you have pretty much everything that you have in the guidebook, the keywords, uh, the creator, mu actually, no, the keywords are in there, but not the creator musings, I don't believe. And then word prompts. And then this is the, you know, experience the tarot fool. And it goes through this kind of story and the journey of the tarot. And then there's the visualization section. So close your eyes, imagine this, that, you know, that sort of thing. And then down here is the creative prompt. So um, I didn't actually do any of the creative prompts, at least I haven't yet, but these are really a fun way to also connect with your deck should you choose to kind of go on more on a journey with your deck. And, you know, there's the inspiration tracker. I didn't get that. I kind of played around with it. Let's go to another one really quick. Oh, I love this card. The Four of Inspirations. Enjoy a milestone event in time with loved ones. So here you have four friends. They're floating on their own little rock. They're all meditating their own peace and they all have the light coming out of them. Their inner light is shining through. And then we have the poetry. So and this one, uh, I can't remember if this one's, uh, some of them are longer than the ones in the guidebook. Other ones are not. Oops, did not mean to do that. Again, the keywords, the musings, the experience, and I would read all this during the meditation music. And then you have the visualization and the creative prompt. Now, as you get later on in some of these, like I'm going to jump to the Eight of Materials. Another gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous card. You know, we've got this really long poem, but there is no poetry audio. A lot of these do not have poetry audio. They just say coming soon. I don't know what her timeline is for that. Um, none of them have been added since I started working on this a couple of weeks ago. So I don't know if it's going to be something that she's going to add a little bit later or what. Again, we've talked about this card. And here's the you know, the poetry is like really visual. I love this because you, it looks like it's in her handwriting. I'm assuming this is Chris Ann's handwriting and she just puts so much, you know, unrisen and my prison and bound are all in this different, you know, surrounded by other things that shows you how the word feels, but unfortunately no audio, which makes me really sad. Um, I do feel I connected less to the cards that didn't have audio because I didn't have something to listen to while holding the card in my hand and really focusing in on it. So I do hope uh, she goes in and, you know, just figures out what she needs, you know, if she she goes in and updates those in the future. Yeah, you can see my, my ceiling light right there. Uh, so, you know, four of emotions, don't miss out on the wonderful things you have while searching for something better. And again, this is a cups card and you can see that because the three cups are there in front of her. And she's pondering, where is my fourth cup? Why don't I have more? And the whole time it's the big cup and she's in it. So that kind of, again, it's the visualization, the really strong visualization of what this card means. And again, we have the really beautiful poetry. And even, you know, this one does have the audio with it. If it didn't have the audio with it, I would hold the card while I read the poem. And then I would play, everyone does have a meditation audio. So that is a complete... Um, thing right now and I would read that or play that while I'm reading the rest of it but again this is just a very beautiful beautiful website all the cards are on here everything is just nicely laid out for you so it's a great way to get to know a deck 
So again, this is the Hay House version of the Muse Tarot, and it is, oh, I want to say I got this for under $30, so somewhere between $20 and $30. I'll have to like double check and I'll put that in the comments down below how much it is currently. Of course, it's always changing. This is a mass-produced deck. However, it started off as an indie deck. The indie version does have the pink gilding, which is where I decided to make this pink. And I matched it to uh, this pink right here. The pink that's actually used on um, the indie deck is more this pink. And that's the color I had done originally. And I just didn't like it. So I did it in a darker pink. And I love it. So this is, again, one of my favorite decks. This is the Muse Tarot. I love this deck. It's a little bit different. It's a little funky. Again, it's a funky offbeat deck. She even says that herself, Chrisanne. You know, some things are changed, but if it doesn't confuse you too much, I do recommend this deck because it has all this extra material and these extra things to help you learn. So again, I recommend this deck a lot. I love it. I've been enjoying getting to know it and it has really helped me to reconnect to tarot. So it might be a little bit different than what you're used to. It's a little bit funky, but it's a very positive, uplifting deck, and I recommend it. So again, Chris Ann, and this can be bought through Hay House. I will have one more. I'm going to do a review of... I'm going to do a review of the Light Sears Tarot. This one I have not even taken out of... Oh, it's already... It's, just kidding, it's not in plastic. So I took it out of the outside plastic, and I wasn't aware the inside was not plastic. But I haven't done anything with this deck yet, so I will be able to show it to you in order, and that is going to be my next, my next video, so stay tuned. Part of the reason I'm doing this right now is because I want to be able to show you a couple of decks when I first launch the channel, so you have a few things to watch. So I'm going to have an unboxing of my Nine of Earth Pride box. I'm going to have the Muse Tarot walkthrough and the Light Sears Tarot walkthrough. Those are going to be my three launch... Um, video. So this is my first video. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, I'm going to do this one next, the Light Sears Tarot. And then I hope to do a couple other videos, maybe like once a week or so. I have a lot of decks. I went a little bit deck crazy around... <laughs> Let's see, you got, you're going to laugh so hard. If you think that from 2003 to 2020, I had one one tarot deck and I wasn't even aware that tarot was like this huge thing that so many creators have made these amazing decks. You're going to laugh when you see what my deck collection, Ooh, knocked my camera, what my deck collection has become. And again, some of these are mass produced. I did purchase these in 2020 as well before I decided to kind of keep piling them up here before I decided to go with indie decks only. I currently have <laughs> three decks that I am backing on Kickstarter and I have about probably two or three more decks in the mail on the way. So from one deck in 2020 to all of this so far in the third week of 2021 and more on the way. So stay tuned because I'm gonna do a bunch of stuff with all of these because Nope, I missed one. My quality time self-care. Stay tuned. I'll be back soon.